albatross around the egg. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome to another bonus episode here on the Dark Parade. This is, of course, the Heart of Horror with myself and uh, the the lovely, the talented, the uh, <laughs> the the sonorous Kate Pollock. <laughs> Hello. And so we're gonna jump into like we were having a conversation off air, and I was like, all right, let's let's just start recording this. All right, because I I want your not your take on this because I, I don't it's not like I'm looking for confirmation but I think it's an interesting oh, yeah. moment in a relationship where you you have that kind of shift in the way that you talk to someone where mm -hmm. you kind of go from the audition stage <laughs> to like oh okay well now it's opening night you know like right okay you know uh where you stop doing the like that kind of courtship dance of like, let me show you my plumage and here, like, <laughs> you know, we're going to talk about all these kind of esoteric deep things. And then now we're just kind of talking like people, you know, yeah. what I, you know what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You get like a natural rhythm and it's just kind of just very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Where it's just like, okay, well this is just the kind of dumb shit that we find entertaining to talk to one another about. Mm -hmm. As a, like it's just getting to know someone i think yeah yeah definitely it's the fun it's fun yeah 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 you know so what like, was your question it's not a question oh. it, i was just i i just think it's an interesting turn in a relationship like when you go from that you know that that kind of introductory period <laughs> where mm -hmm. where you're like okay well let's see how the other person is and if they're freakish then i could bounce real fast <laughs> or you know just hop to that wagon even quicker oh yeah or or you have that moment where you're like hey, you know an example is the first time that you're not first time but like within the first like couple of weeks that you're talking to somebody mm -hmm. um you know you're trying to do best foot forward right like for the most right. part if, yeah. if you're taking the relationship seriously like see yeah, yeah, yeah. see last episode about one night stands um <laughs> and, and sexiness <laughs> but if you're like okay well you know i think there could be something here and let's let's see if we get along if we're compatible and whatnot but all right, right so you have that that you know i'm trying to impress someone kind of stuff yes and which is important and, and it's necessary and all that but then you have like <clears throat> tonight i'm shooting <laughs> this lady for divide a text about how funny I think it is that Chuck E. Cheese has a full name and the full name is Charles Entertainment Cheese. Shut up. It's true. Really? Yes, that is 100% true. Oh my god. And I find it delightful. <laughs> and and so that's the dumb shit I'm, I'm telling her now. Like, but, you know, like, I'm still throwing in some Shakespeare every now and again, but mm, sure. I'm not leading with it. I'm leading yeah, with Charles yeah. Entertainment Cheese. But that's nice because that stuff starts the real you. That's the that's the that's the good shit. That's the juicy shit. Right. Like, I feel like because you're both doing this dance, you know, at the beginning or whatever, and like I feel like you know that they're doing the dance back, and so you kind of there is this oh that's real nice but also you kind of take everything with a little pinch of salt mm -hmm. um just because like you know you know as you say best foot forward or whatever you know that's not ev that's not the whole picture that's not everything um and then so when you start doing the dumb little texts or whatever or like the his is this thing that i found funny or whatever mm -hmm. like that and i want to share that with you that's the real stuff that's who you are really and if you can get past all of the, you know you're saying for like all the esoteric stuff and all the deep conversations or like the kind of the fun flirty whatever stuff and you get to just the kind of more idiosyncratic kind of things more day-to-day -day sort of stuff as well like you know like that's when that's when i feel like that's where you make your decision about whether that person is worth keeping hold of or not. Because if you can vibe on that level too, and that person is still someone who you want to hang out with and you're still attracted to, like even with all this dumb stuff going on, then like that's when it's like, all right, cool. That's when you can get really excited. Yeah. 
that, that yeah that's the point where you're like oh i think we're in a relationship this isn't just yeah you know this isn't just dating this is like we're you know uh there's a friendship there too there's a friendship underlying it absolutely absolutely yeah you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't feel like you can have a relationship without having that friendship there you know like you you can have all the attraction in the world but unless you have something to connect you on a personal and intelligence level um or well more, more, a few things let's say let's go let's let's push the boat out and say a few things mm -hmm. um you know then it's just it's never going to really develop more into just sex i don't think unless it's something kind of unhealthy or just not right um so yeah like when you get to that point then it's like yeah this is a this is kind of getting to be more of a relationship kind of a partnership almost because you're kind of vibing off the same the same stuff as yeah. well as all of the 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 sexual or the um like yeah all of like the the dance you know you, you got past the dance and now you're kind of you're going home to see where they live right 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 yeah it it's you know yeah and ideally like all all of that stuff still exists you know like yeah. all the you know you still <clears throat> want to keep everybody in engaged and yeah. you know like having a good time and also like doing the things that let them know like no 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 i mean like yes you're you're getting a peek behind the curtain to see some dumb shit but also mm -hmm. <laughs> like i you know here's the other good stuff that you were uh attracted to in the first place and then mm -hmm. if you throw on top of that like oh we we also have a good time in bed and, yeah, and yeah like and if you've got sort of that combination of things then it's like oh all right well let's buckle up this could be a good time yeah a hundred percent so that's not what we're talking about though it's just we <laughs> haven't not... be having that conversation because it was a relationship yeah because it's a relationship conversation it felt appropriate for this yeah. particular show um but I feel if you and i can't chat about our relationships then we're, we shouldn't do this show together <laughs> right yeah that, i mean <laughs> exactly um like i'm not about to get all cagey with you <laughs> right, and, like, oh, yeah, but... <laughs> and i'm analytic as hell uh, when it comes to that stuff, like I, I, one of the things I think is a factor of dating as a middle-aged guy is mm -hmm. you kind of look for like the warning signs as well as the, the positive oh, signs, yeah. you know, and, oh, yeah. um, and, but I, I kind of enjoy both of those to some extent because, you know, <laughs> like I've, I've definitely had those dates where it's like, oh, and. I also uh, just got back from this rally against, you know, vaccines or whatever. And you're like, oh, well, this is the last date we're ever going to be on. That's okay. So <laughs> now I can really cut loose. Like, I don't have to pretend or nothing. I could just <laughs> be myself in the worst possible way. <laughs> I just had flashes of... Um, have, you, have you seen... Oh, you must have done. Have you seen the film White Chicks in like 2001 or whatever? 2003 I, or something i have not i know what you're have talking you about but i've never okay. seen the movie <laughs> there's this scene so basically you know the premise okay so like these two <laughs> black dudes who are fbi agents go undercover as these white women socialists and uh, like very paris hilton nicole um richie style and they go they get unwittingly one of them unwittingly gets put into this auction you know like you win a date and you you know you get auctioned off and it all goes to a good cause or whatever it's very elitist yeah. um and terry cruz's character um who is this like egotistical like obnoxious football player stud type guy um just everything the opposite of the real terry cruz mm -hmm. and um he basically gets this obsession with one of the main people as like um you know but as like in, in for lack of a better term in drag but it's not drag but you know in uh, you know as this persona that they are adopting a, as undercover agents and um they go on this date and obviously he is not interested in terry cruz remotely but he has to kind of play the role because he's undercover and what he does is he like orders all of this horrifically smelly nasty things like <laughs> sauerkraut and like garlic mushrooms and like extra sauce and fish and all of this and then just sits there farting for like 
<laughs> ages and like let's and just like burst and everything and is just like talking with the mouth his mouth full and you know he lets open like the buttons on tra on his trousers and lets his belly hang out and everything and like and the funny thing you know he's really trying to put him off and the funny thing is though is that Terry Crews's character is just more and more turned on by it. it's like yeah I got me a real woman <laughs> and he starts like farting and shit back and like <laughs> I just got like when you said that I just got this real image of that like this is you on a date when you've like you've just sort of gone nah it's cool I can, I can just be myself and you're just like the worst version of yourself like ordering all the nasty shit farting really badly for like 20 minutes on end yeah yeah that's literally that was a really long roundabout way of getting to that point but um, <laughs> well, if it's... you had just said I'd seen the film I'd have just gone straight to that scene <laughs> well it's also like uh that scene from Happy Death Day that we discussed right. where it, you know because yeah. you know he's not going to remember the next day that she's you know burping and farting her yeah, it's her. Just, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah yeah exactly exactly if they're, they're equally though like it's funny because when you get to that point of the relationship where things are a little bit i mean okay maybe not this bad but like you kind of can let those things kind of happen anyway like uh there was uh there was someone who i used to who i used to sleep with and um to break up any kind of like real tension or if anything was getting too real because it was a very kind of casual thing um he would just let one rip and it would just make me laugh so much That's funny. Uh, because it would just be like whatever mood whether it was a uh, like we were talking about something too serious or whether anything was i don't know whatever like it, it just i swear to god he could do it on demand and it would just lighten the mood completely so there's that side of it as well you know you can kind of like depending on what kind of thing i mean that was a very casual thing but like you know depending on what you kind of got going on like it's you can either be yourself in the in the worst way and they still think it's cool mm -hmm. or you can be yourself in the worst way and it's just like yeah <laughs> you make let them think it's their decision that they that they didn't call you <laughs> right yeah yeah, yeah. I, yeah <laughs> like there is something to be said for sabotaging a relationship like torpedoing something <laughs> before it goes too far yeah uh just because like you like i said if somebody comes to me is like oh i believe that you know vaccines are a government conspiracy to track us or whatever mm -hmm. then that's one of those moments of like oh well i can do whatever the hell i want and i'm gonna <laughs> go out of my way to make sure that you understand this is the last time we'll, we will be dating yeah um, but you know that can be fun. but you'll also be happy about it as well because you're just gonna go to like a level where <laughs> it's just like that person does not want that second date <laughs> oh yeah sure like you you want it to be a mutual decision <laughs> even if you have to force their hand a little bit like um but yeah uh that is not what we're talking about tonight though that's um, not what we're talking about at all <laughs> no so uh you actually made a very good point the last time we were uh doing the show or in the days thereafter and you said you know the one thing we haven't really talked about is you know non-binary gay you know that kind of relationship subject matter and yes. uh and i was like oh that is right and we ought to and we had ought to so we decided on because I, I had seen this before this is a new watch for you but the movie yeah. we're talking about tonight is knife plus heart mm -hmm. uh or as the french call it un couteau plus uh heart uh i ran out of <laughs> i ran out of french um <laughs> it sounds so much better in french though everything sounds better in french let's be honest it's true it's true like uh <sighs> uh I, I always think back to that eddie azard bit about uh speaking french and how uh he he would say like the monkeys on the table but it was like le sang sur la table you know and it sounds so much better <laughs> so much better uh, yeah definitely but so, so you hadn't seen Knife Plus Heart? No, I hadn't. I had um I heard about it uh from our good friend Duncan a lot. Um and I know he uh <laughs> it's the wrong phrasing. I was gonna say I know he bums this movie hard. That's not... <laughs> yeah. he, he I'm sorry. He strokes this movie 
He really does. Uh, oh. He gives it a real sloppy blowjob. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. D- Duncan <laughs> anyway, I- yeah, I really wanted to see it because because of how hard he wants to uh, suck this film's knob. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> what was, before we get into the movie itself, what was your impression of of the movie as a whole? Uh, going into in the whole. now that I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> it's just, I'm sorry, we've already been so so fucking disrespectful. Uh, <laughs> but it's all in fun. Um, the uh, what, uh, now I've seen it, yeah. Okay, so um, I really fucking like this film. I really fucking like this film. Um, I uh, that sigh of relief <laughs> that I heard there. Um, I just really. Um, I because I knew it was sort of like Jello esque. Um, I would say it's it's more than Jello esque. I'd say it's flat out like a modern day Jello. And even saying that, it's because it's set in the seventies. It's shot like it's shot in the seventies. Um, so you know, if someone had told me if they, if I didn't know who Vanessa Paradis was, and someone had just whacked this in front of me and gone, "Yeah, this is a film from like." you know 1980 or 1979 whatever i'd have been like yeah cool i'd buy that like i wouldn't i wouldn't question it um but um yeah so i i kind of knew it was that i knew it was uh i i didn't realize it was about the porn industry mm-hmm. um i knew it had um a lot of gay sex in it um but i wasn't entirely sure of the context um and yeah but out, outside of that i i, I I didn't really know much about it so it was a very kind of like fresh watch and um uh yeah and then when I came I came out of it I was just like well fuck <laughs> you know? like it was one of those films where I just had to kind of sit back for a you know a hot minute and just let it kind of roll over me and just let me think about what I'd seen and like digest it a little bit and you know and um and it's I think it's going to be like a really interesting chat tonight and um yeah I really felt like it was important that we did do something um representing LGBTQ and um, this isn't going to be the only one there'll be plenty in the future I'm sure um someone who is LGBTQ I'm pansexual so um it was sort of for me it was like as well like you know let's get some representation up in here and um it was it was a good film to kind of go in on and um it's got a lot of different variations of different types of love and sex and things going on here is there's not just gay sex for porn it's like there's a lot of tenderness there's a lot of manipulation there's a lot of um there's lots of stuff going on in here with relationships and different types of relationships so um i think it's going to be a really good one to get into yeah I, but i really fucking liked it like um fucking beautiful fucking film and um done really well and kept me guessing the whole fucking time and it was really fucking disturbing at times and Mm -hmm. yeah really really fucking film a fucking good film it's going to be um it's going to be one that i'm definitely going to have to go back to and now i know how it kind of goes you know and go rewatch it and look out for all the little clues of which i'm sure there are many and um and also as well like just again because i was because i was kind of watching this more analytically for what we discussed i know that there was like a lot of kind of like homages and little nods to other jellos and stuff like that so it's going to be kind of fun but i didn't like that there's stuff like that that i because i was kind of watching it for what we're going to discuss like not that i like brushed it off but i wasn't able to kind of like focus on those kinds of things so it'll be good to go back on a second watch and just sort of you know just to, like have a little bit more fun with the other side of those sorts of things as well um because although i noticed in there with that i was just like okay cool right but also i need to make notes on this you know <laughs> like yeah yeah i it, it was fun watching i think this is second or third time i've seen it. i think second time um yeah. that i that i've seen this movie and uh it was fun to kind of let the movie just happen and yes. you know knowing the beats of it Mm. Uh, and and so that you can just you know sort of follow the story and and pay more attention to you know sort of the relationship for me this time a lot of it was like well let let me focus on the relationship between like lois and Anne. yeah and yeah. uh what 
you know, because they're they're partners, but and and they're both artists in their own way. And, yeah, and they and, work together. And yeah, it's a it's a really interesting relationship, and it also that they're like they do they both work in male gay cinema, mm. but they are lesbian. Yeah, and yeah, uh, you know, I guess that's just where the money is, maybe, or it's just that's what they're good at. And in particular, who is, you know, the director of these films um, mm. is, you know, clearly like there's those moments where Lois will be editing something and will be like, oh, wow, that's like she's really doing something different in the mm-hmm. realm of gay cinema. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which is particularly, well, I mean, we'll get into it, but there is that one like two shot where yes. there's the split screen. Yeah. <laughs> where uh the two guys come at the same time and it's just oh my god you know somebody slapping lotion at him it's so funny and yeah it, all over his face yeah but it's really it, like it's it's really fun and, and it's funny. so funny and, it's so yeah as and as we go through this like i'm gonna defer to you a lot because i am if nothing not uh just a boring straight white guy Oh, like God. that is middle aged straight white guy. I, oh. I'm telling you, it's the worst. But <laughs> but here here's here's what I'll say, because this is really my only you know political stance on this kind of thing, which is I like Duncan and I on I have done a lot of gay films uh, or gay centric films in our conversations with each other, and it it is. I here's the problem I have is i hate it when somebody watches something like stranger by the lake is the movie that's popping into my head right now yeah you know what? yeah that's what pops into my like my lake my head when you said about uh you chatting about um the, uh, like gay films with duncan yeah and like we we've talked about that movie and it's a, a terrific movie and the thing that pisses me off is uh particularly straight white guys like myself that are <laughs> like oh i don't want to watch that because oh. because like some of the gay might rub off i guess oh for fuck's sake and, put your big boy pants on right well it, that but that's the thing is like these are the same people that are perfectly willing to watch two women together it's such a double standard yeah it's so it's oh it's mm, so infuriating like i just the double stand i'm not okay i'm not gonna get into it because i'll have i have a whole fucking episode just about the Oh, fucking imbalance between men and women's sexual representation in films but like especially when it comes to lgbtq yeah like it's all perfectly cute and whatever and oh wild things and whatever like to have two women but they have to be attractive though because if you put like even just one of them who's not not typically quote-unquote attractive um then that's just as offensive right it's got to be <sighs> bound you know yeah <laughs> uh... yeah yeah, it, and that is, it's it's small minded. It, like there's the the thing that I struggle with because you know I I try to get to the bottom of okay what makes you uncomfortable about about, about this? It, like if you're watching two dudes make out, are you afraid that's going to turn you on? And then you've got to start asking yourself some tough questions <laughs> because yeah. that's the only reason why you like. You know, like as a dude, I've got a dick. I've seen a fair amount of dicks in my life just Mm -hmm. in, you know, playing sports and locker rooms and just taking a leak at a concert or something. You see dicks all over the place. in front of each other. Yeah. (laughs) It's one of the advantages of being a guy. You can piss anywhere. And. so lucky yeah it's pretty it's all right i'm not gonna lie uh, i got a story about that actually go on oh no okay okay you know what i've said i said to you in private i'm not gonna hold back because i feel like i've been holding back on my stories but i'm like nope this is what i signed up for <clears throat> okay so i was <laughs> so i was um i was having sex in a car and um I really needed the loo afterwards Mm -hmm. and it was like oh god damn it it was like I don't know like midnight one in the morning I don't know it was early it was late it was very very dark we were in this like quarry um and there's no one around there's no it was like out in the country there was no 
lights particularly or anything anywhere apart from the moonlight and so i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna hop out and just go pee real quick Mm -hmm. and so the guy's all very chill and he's like yeah yeah, cool just you know if you want to go behind the car or something and i'm like yeah yeah because there was like nowhere really around like there wasn't any real kind of cover so to speak and i'm butt naked as well and (laughs) it's a quarry right so it's kind of gravelly it's not like shrubs or anything it's not like grass or anything and so it's a relatively hard surface so i start peeing and there's splashback right right <laughs> so i'm like doing the kind of that weird sort of shuffle with your feet that you kind of do to widen your because i put shoes on and like to widen your stance mm-hmm. and but i get so wide in my stance before like there's no splashback that i'm almost doing the split so i have to hold on to the car and bear in mind butt naked and i start peeing right and it's like the longest piss i have ever fucking taken Mm -hmm. it just goes and goes and goes and goes and i'm like every time i think i'm done like nope nope there's still more right okay what the fuck did i drink you know like to the to the point where the guy comes out of the car to check on me Mm -hmm. and i'm there and like basically doing the splits holding onto the back of the car ass in the air peeing till there's no fucking tomorrow and he's just like are you whoa okay or i'm just like what are you doing and he's just and i'm still peeing i haven't stopped peeing through this whole exchange and he's like and i'm like what are you doing like hey i was checking you were taking a while i'm like i'm fine go away and he just and then he starts revving the fucking end and i'm like don't you be an arsehole and he's just laughing at it and stuff but yeah that was really embarrassing and about 20 minutes like no not 20 minutes but like a little while later i go back in the car and i'm like mm, we will not talk about this i was but gonna yeah, say it, it took you 20 minutes to finish it that didn't, pee. It, it didn't take me. it felt like 20 minutes it was yeah. like but it was i probably was peeing for like a good 30 seconds which for pee it's yeah that's a lot it was a while yeah. yeah i don't know what the fuck happened <laughs> i've not peed like that since nor have i ever before <laughs> usually yeah, it's, it's the... like the guy after sex that's you know yeah. like oh here is an unusual pee thanks to yeah. some leftover semen plugging up the works <laughs> yeah like so um yeah just like i was like where did you think i like where did you think i'd got like i'm not i've got no clothes on what do you think i was gonna do walk home or something like i just like you had to check on me it's like fuck's sake anyway what were we talking about um i was just (laughs) on my soapbox talking about how guys uh should not should not be afraid of a dong that's That's, right yes that is uh, if i can impart any wisdom it's just don't you know if if, uh, particularly if you have that double standard right like if if you think that (sighs) seeing two women make out is kind of sexy and I don't disagree with that, by the way. Let me let me <laughs> just say I'm not above it. But by that same token, you've got to be cool with guys making out in movies too. Yeah, and we're that's not saying that is. you have to be turned on by the guys making out. If that's not your thing, that's not your thing. But sure. don't be fucking offended by it. Like I almost kind of, I mean, I say respect. That's a that's a strong word and one I certainly don't mean in this context. But I almost kind of respect someone if they more if they're going to go. No, I don't want to see women either together because they're just flat out homophobic. Because at least there's a consistency there. Yes. And although it's something I don't agree with, like I'm like, well, at least it makes sense in this weird that fucking awful homophobic logic you know like there's that consistency whereas people who are just like oh dicks you know and guys on guys but oh yeah give me that like scissoring scene or whatever you know it's just like dude right, yeah. come on I, yeah bl- blue is the warmest color is totally fine <laughs> right but yeah it is totally fine it, it, uh, <laughs> you're not wrong Leia say do i gotta i gotta hurt um but <laughs> yeah but yeah, like if if you're cool with that then you've got to be cool with you know uh, what was yeah. the heath ledger cowboy movie brokeback mountain brokeback mountain right and that yeah. is uh, that was one of those movies when i saw it i was like oh this is gonna get raw and it never it does did. it's well, uh, incredible <laughs> no it doesn't tame. get real raw yeah, yeah, although Jake Gyllenhaal's expression does make me laugh when they're in 
like is it when they're in the tent yeah. for the first time and it's like oh there that is <laughs> right and i i like the fact it's that it's very sweet it's a yeah. really beautiful movie absolutely absolutely but yeah just you know here two two things about this and then i'll shut up about it because you know I'm probably not going to change any, anybody's mind but i can't imagine anyone listening to our show is going to disagree with us either that's true but also if everything goes wrong and you watch two guys make out and you are a little turned on by it you have just opened the door on part of your life that is it could be wonderful you know oh like oh my god right like if it turns out all of a sudden you're by and and honestly you know like they say the sexuality is just a, a spectrum like would if i had the opportunity just for the story i would fuck <laughs> brad pitt <laughs> or vice versa I let's would... be honest let's be honest he would fuck me let's yeah oh yeah yeah, he would. He would be the alpha in that situation. I would be. I would be. The you would bare let bottom. him. Yeah. You would let him so hard. <laughs> oh yeah, and and then I would tell everybody about it. I, I that, want, that's why it'll I never want, happen. Like account by account, most like step by step account of of everything. Yeah, if like well, happens. I was just talking to him about how good he was in seven. The next thing I know, I'm getting his seven. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah yeah i do <laughs> but it's funny that you bring up seven actually because I've, I've definitely got a few moments of seven in this film oh yeah but. for sure um but yeah so like if if that's your reaction to to, to two guys making hours to be turned on don't be afraid of that that's just that's part of it and it's not it's not unnatural or anything but i no. and I, you know i think that's one of the the things that this country that I'm in in particular struggles with is we have this very rigid definition mm. of like what masculinity is and what men should behave like. And it, a lot of it comes from, you know, the, the old West stereotypes and that kind of thing that, you know, men are, are stoic. And even with women, they're not overly emotional and certainly not going to be emotional with men. And that's, you know, changing and evolving and so forth. But uh, it's the reason that you see all kinds of weird bills and legislation because people are just terrified of the fact that, you know, there there might be some. I was gonna say non biblical sex, but like biblical sex is filthy. Oh uh, my god! Right. So you know, it's just the the non standard of uh, uh, by their Cis definition. Sex. Yeah. Right. And it, it's unfortunate that, I mean, like, we are a country of Puritans, and that has long been the case, and, you know, uh, it, it always feels like it's one step forward, two steps back when it comes to, you know, gay rights in this country, and mm. recognition of, of LGBTQ issues, and, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, like, the sooner we all get cool with it, the sooner we can all you know join forces and have the star trek future that we all want where we get kick -ass yeah. jumpsuits and you know get to explore space yeah. and whatnot and get sexy yeah. in space yeah just get out of your own way and accept the d is what I, I always say so all that being said like like i said i you know that is my political statement for the episode is just hey be cool uh if if you are afraid of watching this movie because you're afraid of seeing a dick and responding uh, in, uh, to it in a way that disturbs you, then, you know, maybe you got bigger issues than a movie. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And my, my political stance is I can care. <laughs> like <laughs> everything you just said. Yeah. Well, I don't have like a romantic stance necessarily because when I'm watching this movie, I'm like, th this is a really fascinating giallo, but it's tough to relate <laughs> to uh you know not relate that, that's the wrong way to put it it is this is a movie that does not necessarily reflect my experience no exactly yeah but i also think it kind of rules um yeah yeah i mean well i mean uh yeah it doesn't I mean, it, yeah no it, i suppose it does a little bit for me um it doesn't in the you know i've never been in a gay porn well but, sure well um, that's where we differ kate <laughs> <laughs> i went to college uh, uh five bucks is five bucks am i right that's right um, yeah i mean fear doesn't pay for itself 
<laughs> we're all beautiful in the dark um <laughs> we're all god's creatures <laughs> yeah what what is uh is it nons is, is that the kid's name who's working at the construction yeah. site that yeah and it's like look it's a lot of money you don't have to you don't have to like it you know just turn up get hard get paid right right and it turns out he does like it does he does um so he's like the audience that is afraid of dick and then oh oh yeah. hey it's actually all right you know speaking of blue is the warmest color the other thing that i find interesting about a movie like this is because mm -hmm. this is not necessarily um reflective of my personal sexual experiences right it's kind of fun just to be like oh okay well so that's a variation of sex that i haven't seen before that's one for the <laughs> data bank you know yeah like what you mean like with the ending scene as well with like there's like a lot of different positions and stuff happening do you right. mean physically like that or do you mean like yeah, or, a little bit deeper than that like well no not <laughs> yeah it all goes deeper kate um <laughs> <laughs> I knew as soon as I said that, I was like, nope, I'm not going to say it. No. Okay, he said it for yeah, me. <laughs> I, I'll take care of these jokes this episode. Um, that's fine. <laughs> no, I'll set them up, you knock them down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, I mean, partially it's just the positions and stuff, but partially it's just like, oh, yeah, okay, well, that's, you know, I I don't look at men and especially, uh, you know, asses and bulges and whatnot. <laughs> and and be like oh well that is that is a an attractive uh uh, uh part of the anatomy you know i don't even think people who are attracted to men find it overly that attractive you don't think so because there's there are moments in this movie where like somebody pulls out a dick and it's like oh well but, th but they're also in gay porn yeah i, mm, I don't know like i i can't speak for men yeah. Uh, or non-binary people but generally the women that i've spoken to like i mean you can say like that's a good looking cock but it's all relative <laughs> i think at that point <laughs> it's just is it big enough to do the job ah see this is a conversation that i have recently had where it's just like actually like you don't want it too big well of course um you know because you'll get and like for various reasons one is just like i remember hooking up with a guy and he um he had a really big cock, like really big yeah. and i remember he was just like led on the bed like full mass and i was and i literally went i looked at it like kind of appalled and i was just like <laughs> the fuck do you expect me to do with that <laughs> and I dated him for like four months in uh -huh. total, but it was just like, I mean, literally, you know how people joke around going like, oh, the next day she was walking like John Wayne. No, no. The next day I was walking like John, I felt like I'd lost my virginity again. I was just like, the fuck? It like, you don't want that. And also as well, I do feel like guys with, with bigger dicks do get complacent. Like they kind of rely on that. Mm -hmm. And generally they're not that good in bed. Um, whereas... I've been with guys who have been maybe like around average or even just guys with quite small penises, but they're aware of it. And so they, they knuckle down. <laughs> that could have Sometimes been literally. Differently. Yeah. <laughs> literally. Um, yeah. Like uh, they, you know, they, they make up for it, you know, and they kind of, and they, they know what to do with it kind of thing. Like, so it's, um, yeah like it's 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 a weird thing like i don't really like if a guy has if a, you know you can tell with some guys that guys have big dicks you know you can kind of yeah, especially if like when i was younger and i used to go to the discotheques mm -hmm. if we're being continental about it um and you know you start grinding up with a guy and stuff like you can you can tell sometimes if they have like quite a big you know big load of action going on down mm -hmm. there and it's almost kind of like oh i don't know if i really be asked with that because like it's just especially if it's like a one night stand thing because one night stands they generally expect a blowjob and uh, it's just a lot of effort when they're too big it's just a real lot of effort so like it's kind of you have to weigh that up so when it comes to like penises and things not only are they not like really that attractive but also as well like it's there's a very kind of like i would say between Five and seven is good. The Goldilocks zone. Yeah, for yes, exactly, exactly. You know, so um, yeah, I just I don't 
I don't know as I say I'm only speaking from like my experience and like my girlfriend's experiences and stuff like I haven't really spoken to this about this with other guys or like non-binary people so like I might be maybe maybe like gay guys love a massive dick because I don't know I, for whatever reason but yeah I'm like nah I don't really want a big I'm, dick. I'm always curious like if I see another guy's dick I'm like how does that one curve is he circumcised <laughs> what's that look like you know I mean I'm just it's just curiosity yeah you yeah know? that's fair news I'm kind of yeah yeah I get that but but I will say this to all men everywhere just as a, a point of consideration <laughs> that no matter how how big or small a dick you have you just got to have good oral sex game fuck yeah and i tell you what that is something that is rare if you can get that down and genuinely and i mean genuinely not just like oh yeah that was nice or like you know whatever like no if you can genuinely get that right it don't matter yeah it does not matter yeah that's uh, you know mm -mm. i <laughs> so that's not necessarily i wouldn't refer to it as my move but i'm very much <laughs> in the in the camp of oh it, whatever you got to do and it's usually going down just because of you know a lot of women just don't orgasm because of penal st stimulation you know right and, yes. um, so that's why i say no matter no matter how good you are with your dick have a good oral sex game and mm -hmm. if you can if you can get her to come first oh yeah via that then mm -hmm. it's just like okay well you know now it's play ball Any, yeah anything it, else is a brucey bonus right so then you can just have a good time mm -hmm. um that's <laughs> to me that's like handing out the <laughs> business card it's just like <laughs> all right let's let you know let's do a little how, tongue action get you going and how long have you how long have you sort of like I don't want to say like had this theory because it's not really a theory that is accurate um how long have you known about this <laughs> this secret have, have I been aware of this <laughs> have you been aware of this secret um, rule it's... probably since my 20s oh really yeah because when I, uh, yeah. I know guys in their 30s who are still struggling with that <laughs> so yeah I didn't know if it was like a you know with age thing or whatever so like like for the most part but no, yeah, I just, this is something that doesn't get talked about enough, I don't think. I just dated a girl that was like, it is hard for me to come if if, if it's just straight, you know, in, insertion sex. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, you know, I like you enough that I don't want to be the only one in this relationship having a good time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whatever you got to do, grab my ears, slap my head, whatever you got to do to get <laughs> us there. <laughs> And yeah, so I just got an image of uh, Dopey from Such <laughs> He said, "Grab my ears." Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot because I wore the cap and the robe. Uh, <laughs> that's my childhood ruined. Yeah, um, and, and I was just like, you know, it's just his daffy right? look on his his daffy look on his face as well. Just <laughs> yeah, I mean, th thank goodness it wasn't sneezy, you know. <laughs> I'm so loud I've got my fucking family asleep upstairs um. but, but yeah and you know the, uh, like I said it, it's it is a good opening salvo yeah. it, and and if you can get that right then you know here's here's what you're hoping for fingers crossed is mm -hmm. you hear somebody say like oh my god I'm a puddle and <laughs> what then you're like all right then let's get let's get rolling what you kind of also what you kind of want is for like if after you're done if the girl immediately starts to like move on to the next thing mm -hmm. you've not done your job properly absolutely absolutely like she needs to be lying there for a good at least 30 seconds of just give me a minute <clears throat> just give me a minute yeah, yeah you know like that's what you want if she does that you're in good stead or like the rest is is, is downhill yeah not I mean, downhill as in it's easy as in it's like <laughs> sure yeah the, the heavy lifting's done yeah 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 Yeah, and i'm not against uh of a, a little bit of an intermission there of like you do that then you just you know you make out do some heavy petting and mm -hmm. then roll back into it yeah still a good makeout session is underrated i'm telling you it's one of right? my favorite things especially I love just making out yeah yeah 
it, it's great. And it's kind of euphemistic too. You know, like when you're uh, with your, your significant other and you're just like, hey, let's let's go back home and make out for a little bit. Which can mean anything from like, all right, well, maybe one of us is going to get a little oral to one of us is getting tied up. You never know. Yeah, yeah. It can right? be anything. It, yeah, just, it, just see where it goes. But it's a no pressure offer. It's just like, let's just go fool around a little bit. We'll see what happens. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, well, it's just it's kind of like, it reminds, it kind of just takes me back to when I was like, not, not a kid, but like, you know, when you first start exploring those kinds of things and you make out with like someone on the sofa and you kind of do that kind of like through the clothes, dry humping kind of thing, like the, you know, like where it's like, you still have your clothes on, but you're kind of like, you know, simulating sex. And um, yeah, like, it's just like a real kind of like, nostalgia as well yeah. you know with like times before sex where you didn't necessarily have sex but that was still just just as exciting and you know and then if you know because you are a grown-up and let's be honest we completely give into our id factors and you can't say no once we get past a certain point like sure. um yeah you know like you can get to that point if you want to but it's kind of nice just sort of yeah just sort of making out and stuff yeah i like uh, a good um, a, a little bit of making out in a car, I think, is real fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it's that kind of like nostalgia throwback to when you were a teen, and you know, mm -hmm. I guess for you, you go through the drive-through, like the or the or the the drive-in movie theater thing. Like, it's do you did you do that? We didn't have I a didn't. yeah. We didn't have a drive-in very close. I was I didn't oh, okay. I didn't have that opportunity too much. I mean, so I've made out rock, at the movies. And they just rock up at via quarry and wonder why your girl's gone because she's taken forever pissing <laughs> <laughs> yeah drive off uh yeah. <laughs> well i guess she's going home um <sighs> but no in, in like i live in a fairly rural area so we had there were a couple of spots you know that the kids would go um, right but yeah i mean i think the the maybe the first time i ever i can't remember if i fucked or not um but you know this is going back 30 plus years but <laughs> the i one of the first times that i remember like fooling around to the point that i was like oh i am i'm about to conjugate the verb mm -hmm. uh was in, in the middle of nowhere in the country parked in a field um uh, in and on uh a car on oh like you mean like on the bonnet not on the roof yeah not, not on right. the very roof but like on the yeah on the hood of the car yeah 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 nice yeah yeah hey, it was a good time and it like yeah, nobody it was, was around fun. so yeah yeah it was uh, fun. anyway yeah. so anyway <laughs> enough about oral sex uh but can, can you really talk enough about oral sex um, um never I mean, it's one of the great things in life. And <laughs> and one little PS on that whole conversation, though. Uh -huh. uh, if if guys out there are listening to this and they're like, I don't, I, I just don't invest that much time in oral sex. Just give yourself a little bit of a pat on the back when you get somebody to go off like a fucking Roman candle with <laughs> oral sex. That's one of my favorite things is when you're just like, oh, wow, that was that was something. That was a full body, like, you know, gripping the your head like they're going to tear your hair out by the roots because it is, it is happening. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Invest some time. Invest some research as well. Don't just go in there like half cocked, lol. Um, like, do some research. Learn a bit about what you're traversing and mm -hmm. where things are and you know how to <clears throat> work it and stuff yeah. don't be afraid of the slow licks before you go in for the clip don't, oh yeah don't you don't have like you don't have to do the final number at no. the start of the show you know no. like work up to it really pack a lunch spend a day um, 100%, 100%. And also listen to the girl. Like, mm -hmm. she'll don't necessarily have to tell you in words. She'll let you know what whether you, what you're doing is all right or not. And I think as well, the main thing is is is, is have the conversation before of like, oh, I cannot. Well, not every woman does because uh, like some women are like, fuck that shit. But a lot of women will fake it. 
just because it's so fucking boring you wish that it was done and you know that the only way that they'll stop is if they think that they've done a good job so if you <clears throat> yeah so if you um have the conversation of just like hey i really want to make sure you get it right like tell me if i'm not doing it or like don't fake it like please let me know like you know like because what you don't want to do is think you have you're doing really well and actually she's just bored out of her fucking mind yeah 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 don't don't be uh uh like you know a, a little too um hurt if oh yeah don't take it personally for the love of god yeah that's exactly that's what i was trying to get at but yeah you're right don't don't take it personal just be like hey i want you to get off because i want to get off and <laughs> and trust me she wants to get off right so, so like <laughs> it's for the good right yeah it's like a win-win <laughs> don't be afraid to be like not there there you know yes. that's that's a super easy conversation to have and but you gotta appreciate it she'll appreciate it oh sure yeah 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 that i can tell you that from experience just have it t- telling a woman like hey i want you to have a good time so if i'm doing something that isn't doing it for you or you don't like or there's something that you prefer more mm-hmm. let me know and we'll make that happen and yeah totally works and given the nature of this uh of this episode goes to go that this goes to girls too although i imagine girls already probably know about this yeah <laughs> like i can't imagine there's many girls out there going huh i wonder what <laughs> right but uh but just for you know just covering all the bases all right and i guess for the men out there uh if you're if you're going down on another guy don't be afraid, uh, afraid to work the balls that's all i would say about oh, that yeah. oh no definitely not um <laughs> i think as as someone who has received a blow job uh you know a little bit of a, a, a cup of the balls totally fine yeah like do you okay i always find that whenever i do pay attention to balls this always seems like a surprise like oh, well, oh it, okay yeah it is because i i think so balls are often maligned both in appearance because it, it's not a great looking part of the anatomy you don't have to look at it <laughs> but but also it's just because like a lot of men will be like oh don't touch it you're gonna hit me in the balls and it's gonna hurt for a week and a half um well i mean don't like you know flick them i right. mean unless that's what you're into i mean it, some guys are into that but like you know maybe don't go in with that like maybe just you know nice bit of caressing or licking or mm-hmm. sucking or something like that yeah yeah you don't thump okay. it like you're seeing how ripe a melon is <laughs> playing whack-a-mole right but yeah no a tender caress totally fine yeah so there you go that's it i'll tell you another bit for oral advice from me and both. yeah one more uh ladies out there if you're with a fella here's what maybe this is just me this is probably just a me thing but okay. uh i have been surprised by a nipple pinch during sex which is just one of those things like oh that's kind of nice you know yeah. i didn't realize that was on the menu but now that it is don't be afraid of it yeah also speaking of on the menu don't be afraid to do a little bit of bite or a nibble not on the penis probably sure i mean on the nipple oh yeah yeah yeah. no a little bit of that's what i mean yeah a little a little uh suck and a nibble that's never mm-hmm. gonna hurt anybody yeah oh that's yeah all right so <laughs> this movie which we have not talked about yeah. at all but i feel <laughs> like I, I feel like we have been distributing <laughs> valuable advice um yeah we should just call this episode hey hey fellas don't be afraid to go down please call it that so so it opens up on on kind of we're cutting in between lois uh who is the editor of this the the gay movies that her girlfriend ann is doing and also this guy in a nightclub it turns out uh who plays uh uh, guy is his name yeah or guy this is him. Guy. yeah in french and he's he's dancing but we also see him in the movie so that we kind of understand oh this is a guy who's a gay porn actor in yeah. a gay nightclub mm-hmm. which is you know it's late 70s it is sort of that that first big wave of gay men being out and and proud Mm -hmm. and so it is a room full of people fucking and sucking and wearing leather and wearing nothing at all like it's it is every uh flavor of the rainbow here 
Yeah. No and, pun intended. Right. And the, uh, the, the guy, Guy, sees this dude wearing a leather mask. Yeah. Which is not out of line in this environment. It isn't. No, it isn't. Like, if it was anywhere else, you'd be full on red flag alert. But in this environment, it's not the weirdest thing to be seen. Yeah. And so yeah. they end up going to this kind of back bedroom. Yeah. And because I'm sure that, you know, it's one, I, I don't know from experience, but I would imagine that this is the kind of place that's got a couple of nooks and crannies where you can go fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, any, um, <laughs> any respectable sex club, uh, like, well, like I've been to a couple of sex clubs and, um, there's, there'll be like a public, public room or a public showroom where it's like people can watch you do things and then um there are like private ones where well they're private mm -hmm. so like you can go off and you do whatever it is that you're doing in these private rooms and as long as like you know it's all consensual and legal like people don't really tend to give a fuck so um so yeah so i imagine it's probably along that thread right so they are uh m you know going at it um and the guy with the mask pulls out this dildo this black mm -hmm. dildo yeah and the and he ties the the other guy up yeah and like uh, face down right gags him as well mm-hmm hot uh sure and this is actually really quite a hot build up as well because the bit where he like turns him around real quick and like shoves him up against the wall and starts like licking the back of his neck like, i know that sounds bizarre saying like it sounds a little bit odd but when you watch it i was just like oh hey yeah mm -hmm. you know like that was hot i do find um gay guys getting on though really hot as well as gay women sure. i like it all <laughs> yeah well so, yeah it's, uh, frankly a little <laughs> pansexual I'll, me I'll, a little greedy but i'll allow it um uh, well <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah it's like yeah i mean it, it's again you're talking about you know the the gay scene in france in the late 70s i mean jesus it's gotta be just coke and booze and fucking mm -hmm. and even if you're not into it it's easy to get into it you, you know? are gonna get into it yeah and so the what a time to be alive <laughs> if only uh Ugh. but like the pre aids epidemic yeah yeah epidemic. yeah only just though because this is late 70s and this it's like uh yeah. set in 1979 i want to say yeah and it's yeah mm -hmm. it's right around the corner from yeah you know when all of this is going to come crashing down yeah yeah but there's still a lot of prejudice like so much prejudice prejudice anyway well yeah and um, i mean that's kind of the whole movie or we learn uh, yes you know this whole movie is kind of hinged on hey this would all be totally fine except for you know the one character yeah. that gets shamed for being who he is yeah exactly um but yeah so um we, the the killer the mass killer uh turns out he's got a switchblade hidden inside this dildo and flips it out and then begins you know stabbing uh poor Guy with it and and so that's the big first murder that's what launches the action of this film yeah it it really uh i have a real like i get like in films and stuff like anal rape is a real trigger for me mm -hmm. um it not because i've been anally raped but i have had accidental anal before oh that yeah that's not when, cool when i was 15 oh yeah so <laughs> that was not fun and um and it was a genuine accident the guy felt horrific mainly because i wouldn't stop crying um but like uh <laughs> real bring down the time but yeah so it's a little bit of a trigger for me because i have like not i mean not to this guy's level jesus but like i mean to a kind of a degree i felt that pain mm-hmm um, and just the the sickening feeling that you get afterwards um it's yeah so it 
like stuff like this like it was yeah really and then also i didn't realize that the that the sound that you hear like the um the kind of the whining is actually the the killer making that noise and i thought it was the victim and you know you don't like see any kind of penetration but you understand that he's being like you know uh sodomized by this blade and um you know and so you hear this sort of like whining and screaming and stuff and it was just like it was so so disturbing and especially because he's like you know he's bound he's face down on the bed he's fully naked completely vulnerable and helpless you know um and it was just like because you know if our if our loyal listeners have uh, picked up on anything is i'm really kind of into kinky sex mm -hmm. so normally that scenario is a happy place for me so to have those two kind of things combined where it was a happy place and also a very kind of like horrific moment for me kind of those two aligning in my head it was like very unsettling to watch um so it was kind of like i'd gone kind of it kind of reminded me of, of my experience while um reading american psycho was like one minute you're like really like oh hey yeah give me some of the oh shit you know like it could just turn in like a split second from being like really hot and like you know almost pornographic to really fucking disturbing um but at the same time it was really really well done and it was um really horrific but it got really got my attention you know i was just like oh this is a film that is not going to hold back and i knew it wasn't i knew it was going to be a film that didn't hold back like you know i don't think you can focus a film around the gay porn industry and have it be you know muted <laughs> or <Yeah>. tamed <laughs> but like it was like oh we're going in with this it was you know it's like oh okay this is that's the that's the line here that's the baseline and everything else is just going to be like you know from then on this level or, or more so i was like oh shit we're in for a ride <laughs> you know and it was such a, a, a like a like this is you know you really kind of get in some of those jello tropes as well with like the leather gloves and like the bizarre weapon and the lighting and the you know 80s sort of synth sound like soundtrack and stuff you know so it was it was cool seeing all that stuff as well yeah the music in particular is real good in this movie. Um, so good so after the murder we are kind of introduced and we've mentioned the characters already but it's Anne played by uh vanessa paradis who mm -hmm. is the director and and sort of you know creator of these men's gay porn movies yeah and then she has her girlfriend lois who is sort of her partner and uh but at the beginning of the movie we are clued into the fact that lois is sort of like she's had enough she's what she wants out of this relationship but they're going to continue this work relationship they have but yeah. they're not going to be together anymore yeah and it sort of seems to indicate that um Anne has a bit of a, a substance abuse problem and and drinking problem and that could well be part of the like the main sort of reason as to why lois is kind of like no nah, i'm done yeah because <laughs> like Anne calls her up at like two in the morning and she's clearly wasted on something and lois is just like oh this is not the first time that this has happened and she's yeah. like I can't do this with you right now. Like, no, <laughs> like you're wasted and I really need to sleep and I will see you at work tomorrow and we will be fine. But you have to understand we're done. Yeah. And in the wake of that, there is Archibald who is, love him. yeah, who is sort of kind of the first mate on this gay porn ship yeah uh, i think they're like best friends aren't they Arch archie and and Anne. yeah they kind of hang out together when they're not filming and things like that yeah and um and because she is also kind of a creep um <laughs> has a people <laughs> where she can watch lois edit and she just clearly obsessed with uh um, yeah you know the this woman that is breaking up with her 
Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, there's Archibald and then there's kind of the stable of regular actors that she works with. And then I mentioned this scene earlier, but it, it's maybe my favorite scene in the movie is when she goes to this construction site or whatever. <laughs> so good. <laughs> and there's this young kid who looks like uh, Guy. Yeah. And, she, you know, she's like, hey, uh, have you ever wanted to work at the movies? And, uh, you know, I do these gay uh, films. And he's like, well, I'm not gay. And she's like, well that's okay you know you don't have to be gay it's a lot of money and if you change your mind like you know you can make three or four times in three hours what you would make working here for a week yeah and so she leaves you know her number with this guy and he's all like well straight is such a strong word <laughs> <laughs> right i mean it's a lot of money mm -hmm. and when she leaves, though, the thing I like so much about this scene is that her buddy Archibald is waiting at the car. <laughs> and she's like, I can't wait for you to see this guy. He looks just like Guy. He is so fresh-faced. It's going to blow Lois away. Yeah. And, yeah. and Archibald is like, oh, I see what's going on here. You're, yeah, he's very savvy. Yeah, this isn't necessarily... I mean, yes, you're casting a movie, but also you are trying to use this as a way to get back with Lois. Yeah, because she overhears Lois sort of say like, oh, this is very sort of like the same old, same old kind of thing. She's very, because she obviously, she sees all the footage day in, day out. And, you know, she's going to become pretty jaded with it all after a bit. And I think that doesn't she like, and sort of overhears her sort of say like, oh, this is, it kind of is a bit samey or words to that effect anyway. Yeah. That she's kind of, it, it's just become not art anymore. Yeah. You know, and for all of her, you know, abuse problems and her fixation with Lois and that kind of thing, like Anne is trying to make movies that yes, they're, you know, it, it's gay pornography, but it's also, there's some style. There's, there's some substance to it all yeah yeah they're trying to make something more than they want to like yeah they just want to they want to make a good film around gay porn yeah like if you people are gonna watch this but if you're gonna do it why not do it with a little bit of style yeah and uh this all of this kind of is interrupted because Anne is contacted by the police and questioned because oh you know this guy that was in your movies has been found murdered <sighs> And, and though, you know, she doesn't really have obviously any knowledge of the, the murder or anything like that, but she gets it in her head that she's like, oh, you know, what would make a great movie <laughs> is a murder mystery. Yeah. And so there's a bit of this, like, you know, film within a film kind of thing where Anne is essentially making a movie about the investigation of this yeah uh, of a gay guy who dies who was murdered yeah and so uh that interrogation scene is like the the reenacting of that interrogation scene is so funny right he's just like wanking him off with his feet underneath the table Every, but he's also yeah. dressed up as Anne in this horrific blonde wig <laughs> awful blue eye shadow <laughs> so he starts jerking off and then the cops start jerking off and it's one <laughs> he big starts banging the typewriter banging the table is so funny oh my god and th like the seats are genuinely very funny oh god it's so funny sometimes and um yeah so uh, this movie anal fury is going to be the name of it <laughs> <laughs> i'm such a fan of the new name though like it's fucking genius yes <laughs> homocidal <sighs> is homocidal is what they ultimately call it <laughs> like give it all the awards just off the name alone just uh, give it all the awards you know it's interesting because uh, on um uh, uh the episode that we did this month for dark parade on mm -hmm. hell night Hell Knight right. was directed by a guy who did a lot of gay porn. Ah, oh, was it? Yeah. And, okay. And some of those, hold on, uh, I've got to find 
some of the names of oh, his please, movies. Oh, please do. Because please do. I think that the thing that I love most about gay pornography is the name of the movies featuring gay pornography. So, most most porn movies anyway, like if they're like the proper movies, like not just like a five, ten minute clip or something, but with actual plot or like the parodies. Mm-hmm like the parody porn movies of like actual movies and the way that they use puns oh my god it's so good i love a good pun uh there's swap meat that's spelled (laughs) m-e-a-t-e yeah um (laughs) (laughs) everything goes duffy's tavern my uh, is this my favorite maybe six card stud oh is pretty good the harder they fall heavy equipment hot (laughs) trucking but yeah yeah he also the same guy who did hell night and the aforementioned uh gay porn also did reform school girls i don't know that so yeah yeah a long and storied history um (laughs) <laughs> anyway but yeah so they're making anal fury which is uh you know an interpretation of of this investigation and uh and sure enough this this kid non uh has shown up and he's like well i guess it turns out i do want to make a lot of money and she's like great <laughs> take off your pants and, yeah, you're on <laughs> right and you're up <laughs> Then uh, the killer strikes again in the movie, killing uh, a guy named Terry, Mm -hmm. who um, is on heroin. Yeah. And and gets murdered pretty terribly. It's really horrible. It's like, sorry, excuse me. It's, um, it's, for me, it doesn't, it's not as bad as the first one, but it's still not, still not a way you want to go. No. No, no, no. I mean, none of these are, but yeah, th- this is is pretty rough. He's like, because he's high, and so he has this dildo, which he's, I don't know, did he strap it on? I got a feeling that he strapped it on. I think so, uh-huh. but yeah, kind of shoves it in this dude's mouth. And the guy's just like, on reflex, if nothing else, just like, all right. <laughs> right. All right, all right, all right, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, and then, yeah, and then he was like, whatever, little Thing he's got to procure this switchblade and then he just starts literally face fucking him with yeah. a blade yeah it's rough and it goes right through the back of his head and yeah. all right so in the wake of Talk that about deep throat <laughs> <laughs> yeah which by the way i didn't realize because i've never seen the original deep throat i didn't realize uh. until recently that that was about a woman who has uh her clitoris is in her throat it's in her throat yeah. yeah i shouldn't laugh because that actually that whole backstory about the real like the real actress and stuff is fucking horrific um but, um but yeah that is that's the plot they went with yeah i mean i guess your movie's got to be about something it's uh, gotta be about something sure but uh yeah so there's a, a scene after this where lois is doing some editing and finds this message burned into the film Oh, that's so fucking cool, though, isn't it? Yeah, and it it's the message is you have killed me. Yeah, but that's um that was done because this is what's cool is that it's like a almost like a double thing because it's done over this the image of um Thierry. Yeah, oh, it's his name Thierry, right? Yeah, and um, but it's because Anne has witnessed Lois like dancing and making out with another woman at this club and clearly not thinking about Anne and Anne is all like jealous and upset and shit and then um and then she goes and she inscribes the message on the reel knowing that she'll see it the next day but it just so happens she does it over the next murder victim and so this is where we start getting all our like the misdirection and like oh could it be Anne could it be Lois who's the killer kind of you know um get because the female killer in jello and stuff is not uncommon so it kind of plays with that and the whole kind of like double meaning behind the message and of course Anne is writing it presumably just because of like oh you've killed me in terms of like i've seen you with somebody else and now i'm like you know all melodramatic and shit but um 
but it could also because of who it's done over and we know we've just seen him be murdered like oh like is it to, it's like is Anne saying this or is like she pointing at Lois because she knows something has Lois done this kind of that sort of thing like those th those are those kind of thoughts that were going through my head at this point and then when we see it how it looks on the film it looks so fucking cool mm -hmm. like it's such a great effect and also i am a fan of being over dramatic so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, anything like a hell hath no fury i'm like ooh, yeah give it to me <laughs> yeah i get it there is nothing quite as upsetting as being heartbroken and seeing the person who broke your heart being yeah. just fine I've been in that, that literally that situation where um, it was my first ever like real love, like where I genuinely loved them. And I was 16 and he broke up with me and, but we still shared all the same friends. And so we would continue to hang out, which was a dumb, dumb idea on my part. But um, anyway, so we all went to this um, party and I was, because everyone else was, I was also crashing around his that night. Um, but at the party, I saw him dance with this girl um, who, oh my God, uh, I won't say a full name, but I'll just say the last name. Guess what her last name was? Uh, oh, I don't know. Come I on. kid you not, Dix. Oh, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <clears throat> I don't want to slut shame, but she definitely lived up to that name. Anyway um but <laughs> that's not slow shaming <laughs> that's just you being vindictive it is it is but it's also true um but it just didn't help the fact <laughs> that like it wasn't helped by the fact that she was dancing with my really recent definitely still not over at x but also it like it was the situation itself wasn't helped by the knowledge that she was a bit of a Hall. so anyway <laughs> um <laughs> I'm, I'm not bitter about it like 18 years on still not sure, bitter about sure. it oh god i tell you what some cuts like some wounds cut deep anyway so um i had just like witnessed this i was drunk i was 16 and then i had to crash at the guy's house right and then he and i was sleeping in the spare room for the salt in the wound and um and he came in and i was like sort of you know a bit white girl drunk and sort of like half conscious and he came and bought me like a pillow and like a, a like a warm blanket kind of thing to like sleep on because I think I'll sleep on a sofa or something and um and I said to <laughs> I said to him I was like you know what's funny and he's like what and I go <laughs> how you act like you still care <laughs> oh wow that is dramatic so dramatic. That's pretty good. <laughs> that that feels like there should have been like uh an Echo and the Bunny Man song playing <laughs> as you said that. That's pretty good. And I don't I don't I, it was a really dark, so I don't know what his expression was, but he just walked out without saying a word. And it was either like, oh man, that really hurt, which is how I choose to believe he reacted. It was just like, oh for fuck's sake, okay, this is why we broke up. Shut the fuck up and go to sleep. You know? I can't I can't deal <laughs> with that. Probably right that now. one. Yeah. <laughs> Probably that one. But I'm choosing to believe that it was because I just, you know, I gave him some home truths and he couldn't take it and he just couldn't be in my presence anymore for the shame. Yeah. That's what I choose to believe. <laughs> I had that not that long ago when when my last girlfriend broke up with me. Mm. Um there was like that day where you were kind of swapping shit, you know, of like, oh, oh, let me, let me, yeah. let me bring back your stuff and I'll pick up my stuff. Yeah. And my shit was organized in a way that I think it had been done for a while. And I realized like, Oh, oh that's so savage. yeah, it was like, and like, she didn't say anything directly, but it was one of those like, Oh, she's been wanting to do this for a while. Uh, that's uh that is cold yeah that sucks um anyway so yeah uh, we're both on <laughs> and side we've both the... been there yeah we're on our side of this at this point yeah maybe not later but yeah yeah <laughs> she crosses a line to be sure but um so everybody making the movie is like understandably freaked out about yes. like oh well are they killing people who were in this movie 
Yeah. And Anne's like, no, 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 it's going to be fine. I'm going to hire some more actors. We're going to finish this. We're going to change the name to Homocidal. Uh, new look of paint. <laughs> It'll be brand new. Bright, brand new. Yeah. Um, have it, has she been to the, the police yet? I can't remember. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and they're fucking useless as per every Jello. But they're like beyond useless. Like, because Jello cops usually are like, they try, <laughs> but they're just shit at their job. And so some outsider has to, you know, work out the mystery on their behalf. Whereas these guys just, just don't even try. No, yeah. They're just... like, well, they're just appalling. Yeah, it's that whole like less dead thing, you know? I mean, it's just like, hey, well, these are, you know, gay gay people getting killed while in the process of doing gay shit that yeah, has nothing exactly. to do with us exactly yeah and it's this uh yeah again it kind of goes back to the the stuff we were talking about how like back in that time it was very much like you know especially as we saw like later on with the aids pandemic and stuff just gay people being seen as like less than citizens less than people yeah. um and they don't have the same rights and we don't have to give a fuck because they're gay. And it's kind of like a just desserts kind of attitude, which is just so sickening. Or here in Florida now. <laughs> like that. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, it's yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Love is love people. Love is love. Yeah. Right. It, there's this whole push in this country that, I mean, it, it, it goes beyond sadly it goes beyond lgbtq uh issues as well and mm -hmm. it's just this idea among a lot of particularly older straight white people i was gonna say middle-aged straight, straight white men yeah that are just <laughs> like yeah but but the attitude is like well this is what i believe and if you don't believe it then you're just wrong and there's no there's no conversation right then i'm gonna legislate it so that the way that i view the world is the way it's going to be and yeah. it's you know borderline yeah. fascist it's terrible but uh, it's really fucking awful yeah um but yeah <laughs> so anyway so the, the the they finish shooting homicidal pretty quickly i'm just gonna laugh every time you say that it's so, so good. good it's the, so good it is the absolute best and, and it's so good so they celebrate by having a picnic ah oh, it's so fucking wholesome and um, they bring along with them not only the people who who shot the film, but there's uh, some people that used to work with Anne. Yeah. Uh, there's Misia, um, who I love Misia. Yeah, and um, and she's transgender as well because they initially refer to as her dead name of Martin, and then she goes and she's in like you know she's wearing female clothing and has grown her hair out and things and she's like oh i go by misia now um it kind of runs with a trans pack yeah yeah they do yeah and um it's <laughs> and Anne tries to uh, yeah and Anne tries to offer them money to like work on, on her film and she says like it's like 50 bucks an hour or something like that and like uh 50 francs i don't know whatever it is and um yeah and she, and they just immediately laugh in her face right. just like we, we get more than that for a blowjob are you kidding like yeah it's very but i do kind of feel for Anne in that moment because she there's this real kind of like moment where the camera kind of has a close-up of her expression and she's kind of laughing or whatever and then she just sort of turns away and she's just clearly really bummed out by what they said and their reaction i did feel for her in that moment but it was also very funny to watch their reaction yeah and they're they're all uh you know the implication is that they're all sex workers but um you know they seem to have a pretty good life going on or they're they're you know free to be themselves and all that yeah and so they're comfortable with who they are and so they've come along on this picnic uh, as well and um uh, it's at, the rat picnic isn't it yeah and yeah then um as they're all having a good time this storm blows in and, uh, it, you know, they're all kind of running through the woods to get to shelter and get back to their cars and that kind of thing. And poor Misia gets separated from everyone and gets lost. 
Yeah. And is murdered by our killer uh, in the middle of the woods all alone, which is maybe the saddest moment in the movie. It's so sad because Mises, Mises just had this really lovely moment with Anne where she doesn't palm read her because she, because he, Anne specifically is this palm reading. And she's like, no, this is more just like of a feeling. But she's really bang on in what she says. I can't remember her exact observations, but it's to do with how she's feeling at this moment about Lois and... Um, and things and this sort of like lack of control or whatever and but it's this really tender like I felt really just like this real kind of comfort while watching that scene like you can tell me she is just a very gentle loving giving person and that really comes through in that moment because Anne at this point she's a bit of a wreck she you know she's obsessing over Lois and she's upset with what's happened with Lois and this other woman and she's you know got obviously she's very kind of like concerned about these murders and everything and is it at this point that she starts or is it just after I think isn't it she starts to kind of lose her mind a bit oh, like yeah, really totally. lose her mind yeah. um, but she's on the brink of it at this point you know and she's drinking we see her constantly drinking from this like whiskey bottle or whatever and um and everything and so she's kind of a bit of a shell of a person whereas Misia is kind of the opposite she's very comfortable with who she is she's doing okay and you know she's got a circle of friends that she's very comfortable with and she just sort of gives this kind of comfort and this very sort of tender moment with Anne and I just felt like I'm so nice you know <laughs> and then fucking this happens well Misia gets literally stabbed in the back and it's like oh yeah it, it's it's and rough. she's on her own and she's lost and, and oh. so after that death, Sorry. yeah no 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 i mean on the heels of that is where ann um goes after lois mm. and because lois has turned up to this picnic and she kind of runs off with Anne in the storm yeah and lois is you know they find themselves outside is a train depot and yeah and you know Anne has lois kind of pinned against the wall and is getting uh really aggressive Pansy. yeah and saying things like you know let me let me smell you one more time and yeah and like this is mine she grabs her breast and this is mine grabs her legs and then she does the same and she reaches up her skirt and all the while lois is going like no stop stop no i don't want this <sighs> it's really not cool yeah and you know, I mean, essentially assaults her, and Lois it finally is, yeah. runs away. And Anne is, you know, she was drawn. I'm not making excuses for her behavior, but like she kind of realizes pretty quickly what she's done. Yeah, she's pretty appalled by herself, and and, and I think that's important because we need to root for Anne as a character. Mm -hmm. And I think because she's been kind of. Um, fairly uh disassociative so far be uh, aside from when it comes to the lowest stuff like when it comes to the killings like you know she hears about uh carl's like death and she makes it into a film she like monetizes off it kind of thing and um you know and they even sort of say like are you not bothered by this at all like you're making a movie about this and it's like you know the body's not even cold yet kind of thing like and you know so there are moments where you know she can be quite a like a very hard to relate to character um and but she is our main character she's who we kind of follow through this and so i think like she has these really awful low points but we need to see the vulnerability in her and the and the humanity in her too because otherwise we're just not going to care about her as a main character um so it's good that they have her react so quickly to what she's done because it's pretty fucking awful and Lois is clearly very like upset by it and and then also as well because we have like we make it like an added creep factor is we have the killer in the background watching mm -hmm. ugh, ugh. oh and also real quick just um before that with Mises um just because I saw my notes and it was such a fucking great moment with um with Mises killed they have the bit where Mises is like spinning around in the forest and like the camera spins around and every time we focus back on Mises, the killer's getting closer and closer behind her oh it's so fucking creepy yeah it's a really it's good so time. fucking creepy and, yeah but before uh I forget to say so um shout out to Jan Gonzalez who 
wrote and directed this movie and it yeah i mean directed the hell out of it it is really directed the show out of this yeah it, it's a beautiful beautiful movie um yeah. and and i mean not for the least reason how the movie ends but we'll get to that in a minute but um oh God, yeah. so uh winding our way through the the murders and the plot here the mm-hmm. uh and uh when she's talking to the police after you know Mesia's death and um there are you know more killings uh as well um and she is given a clue that yeah. a crow feather is found next to all of the bodies yeah this is where we really start to get into the mystery side of this murder mystery right well yeah Anne is now like hey i gotta you know i i've become sort of part of this investigation and so i'm going to it, it, that very giallo thing of yeah yeah because i'm a suspect and or related to the investigation i am now yeah. going to begin investigating yeah and she also i think it's now that she starts to wonder hey could this be could i be involved with this somehow like it's i might i'm losing my mind i'm drinking and i'm i'm you know bereft and everything like could i have could this could I have snapped and maybe this is me and I'm just blacking out or something like she starts to really kind of lose her crazy at this point yeah and so uh she starts hunting around at like you know uh, uh for people who who know about crows pet shops and and mm-hmm. pet specialists and whatnot animal specialists and is told like oh well this feather belongs to this very specific kind of crow that's notably blind and there is only one little town that has a force that contains this species of crow Mm -hmm. and so of course Anne is going to travel to this town um she uh goes to this forest where these crows uh reside and finds a little cemetery there where there is a woman crying yeah and uh you know and speaks with her a little bit and um this is kind of where we get the story of Guy Favre yeah who is you know let's just be real he is the killer this is this is where we get the story who um had uh, as a young man, had an affair with uh, another young man named Hisham. Yeah. And uh, they were having sex in the barn, and Guy's father caught them. And there's a very real loving relationship. Like, it wasn't, it was very pure, I feel. Like, it was, like, they were genuinely, like, in love and... Oh yeah, I like, mean the way it's presented is like all this golden light and soft filters. It's so beautiful. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like like you say, it, it feels like you are learning about a love story, not mm-hmm. you know, um, <laughs> despite nothing the, sorted. Right, like in a movie where you're seeing people get their face <laughs> splattered with lotion as they're filming <laughs> a, a scene. Um, yeah, this is very much very tender. Yeah. And it's kind of yeah. interesting that this movie has those gears and it kind of draws a distinction between sort of like the, you know, adult, somewhat cynical views of sex. But you're also getting, you know, like Misia, who is n- n- still part of that world, but also has really like embraced who she is. And, mm. you know, all of the gay men in this movie, like nobody is really on the fence about like you know no, nobody's uh self-hating or anything like no. particularly they really sorry carry on i know i was just gonna say particularly a character like archibald who is <laughs> you know just completely um out not only out is just he like he celebrates his lifestyle and just everything yeah. he does i love archie yeah and even when you've got you know um what's his face who who came in from the um nuns yeah nuns yeah that's right um you know even he like once he's kind of like on set he's kind of like oh cool well i guess i'm gay now you know like there's no like inner 
conflict there's no oh my god what's my dad gonna say like oh what is this he's just like oh well you know i guess yesterday i i was straight but today i guess i'm kind of queer cool you know it's like it's very cavalier like that and um yeah as you say everyone's very just kind of comfortable and confident with who they are and and like even and and the thing is as well with like um you know even Anne who is such a messed up character like she's got so much internal conflict but not once is it about her sexuality she's not messed up about her sexuality she's very clear in what she wants and who she wants and she has no problems with that and it's really refreshing to see because a lot of the time you know we do have a lot of you know lights being put upon like the questioning of sexuality or like the shaming of sexuality and here I feel like this is a movie actually that really celebrates it um whilst also highlighting the obstacles that the LGBTQ community face you know like being considered sub-citizens and you know and having lots of prejudice and stuff and and having hate from family members and and things like that but in terms of themselves and who they are they're happy they're confident they're living their best lives and you know that's cool like fucking like mouth because i don't think we ever really find out his name do we no 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 he's just called <laughs> he's called mouth um he's a fluffer so for those who don't know a fluffer is someone who works in the porn industry and basically gets someone hard if they're having trouble performing and he just gives goes around giving everyone blowjobs and then nuns i think it's nuns isn't it who asks him he says oh how much do you get paid and he's like i live my mum. i don't have anything i need to pay for so he's just there just giving head for fun and he's really happy about it you know like, guy just loves his work you know it's like he just old, really loves his job if you, if you like what you do you never work a day in your life they say exactly 100 percent. and he's like and i love him like he's one of my faves because he's just so just happy to turn up to work and give blowjobs when needed yeah <laughs> I mean, it's really interesting that i i hadn't really thought about this in this exact way but you're right that all of the conflict comes from like an external source in this movie yeah that yeah none of none of the gay characters are conflicted about being gay whether they're you know male female trans whatever it's like whatever they are they are they are happy to be that yes. and it, it is all the and and like well you know we'll get to it but like uh the whole reason that Guy is you know and puts this together pretty quick like oh the reason he's crazy is because his father kills his lover hisham mm. castrates Guy, yeah burns down the barn with Guy inside and and hisham and hisham and that Guy survived but was horribly disfigured yeah and burned and scarred yeah and so th later that night they've got to like go and ends up going to um check out newspaper clippings always a scene i like in a movie is when you're investigating stuff i love it like in last night in soho another neo jello yeah absolutely. you gotta have you gotta have it <laughs> and uh, instead of ghost people stalking and here it's just her finding like all these <laughs> clippings of like oh here is you know Guy's murder and she's like oh my god this is definitely the killer so mm -hmm. i'm gonna set a trap for this this guy Guy. hey <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i see what you did there <laughs> thank you um so <laughs> she assembles the crew to do a scene that is like sorry <laughs> I was just laughing because when you said Avengers, it reminded me of like Avengers Assemble, and I was like, "That is not this movie." Right? Yeah, gay Avengers <laughs> Assemble. Can you imagine like Tony Stark? Oh, yeah, I can imagine Tony Stark and Chris Hemsworth. No, you carry on, but I'm just gonna get in my happy place. Yeah, I mean, the fact that that hasn't happened in one of those Marvel movies yet is a crime. Mm -hmm. Uh, real crime I, you've got to watch the there there is a gay version of that I'm i was sure. gonna say someone get on that gay porn right now if it doesn't exist if not if someone knows of where that i can find that um that would be great hold on this is gonna <laughs> dm me here, th this will screw with my algorithm for a while <laughs> gay porn version of avengers uh you know you can incognito that shit right i probably should have 
yeah, you should have done, but okay. <laughs> um, I I think there's just a a, a a one just called like Gay Triple X Avengers is what it's called. Excellent. So, I, I will check that out later. But yeah, there were definitely uh, Pornhub <laughs> results of of <laughs> like, oh, if you want to see this, it's out there. Yeah, um, cool. Got ya. Anyway, we'll see we'll see what my algorithm starts feeding to me. Like what, what the next thing that Amazon tries to sell me. Please screenshot it and put it up on the page <laughs> if anything comes up. It's just gonna be like dildos and lube and as long as it's not switchblade dildos. Oh. That would be that'd be such a good name for like a like an emo punk band, like Absolutely. goth band. That's my, switchblade that's, dildos. It's my college band. That's going to be my email handle from now on. Um, <laughs> it's going for job interviews. What's your email? Switchblade dildos at hotmail.com. It's pretty good. Yes, you heard that right. That's really good, right? It's pretty good. <laughs> um, anyway, Karen. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So she uh, assembles the Gay Avengers to do <laughs> the the scene, which is like this weird cult scene or something. Mm -hmm. and while she is getting everybody together for this in hopes that she's going to lure Guy out into the open Lois is finishing the edit on homicidal and yep. sees Guy in the background of some of the shots yeah it's well creepy yeah and she's like holy shit I gotta go warn Anne and so she runs to Anne and then there is this incredible scene where like the lights go out oh that's so good and Guy shows up murders one of the actors this guy who has an incredible mustache it's so good it reminds me of even uh, like it reminded me of like um cross between like magnum pi styley and like danny trejo yeah yeah like that uh, thickness um and so he that guy gets murdered and then Guy goes after Anne, but Loa shows up in the nick of time to take the knife in, in, in ten, the heart. Yeah, knife plus heart. <laughs> and so she ends up getting stabbed and dies in Anne's arms while mm -hmm. Guy escapes. Because Lois, am I right? Because Lois doesn't know it's a setup, does she? No, 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 no. So it's all, that's what, yeah, cool. Because I just like, I was like, I want that to be the case because it just makes it so much more heartbreaking. Yeah. Mm. So now Anne, it, like, has no one. You know, nope. Lois is gone. Um, there is a premiere of Homicidal at uh, a, a gay theater. Yeah. And we see in the audience like she's in the audience and there's also Guy uh and the kid that she recruited uh Nance. Nance. yeah and the um when the movie ends they they start looping an, an another film that Anne did you know and she's like oh mm -hmm. here's a here's a blast from the past an oldie but a goodie and yeah she realizes like as she's watching this new movie or not new movie but it's an old movie that they're showing after this premiere that mm -hmm. all of the murdered actors were in a single scene yeah that basically you know whether knowingly or not kind of recreated this story that Guy has yes yeah it's not exactly the same but there's enough of the sort of talking points so to speak you know you've got two guys in a barn having sex dad walks in except weirdly <laughs> he's into it yeah right <laughs> um and he's like oh hey son come here let me snog your face off and then they start dancing naked like something that is not entirely not in like the wicker man like dancing around this burning barn so it's a happy ending in this film Right, but um, you can see why Guy would be... But you can see why that would be triggering. Right, he saw this movie and just went off his nut. Yeah. And so while Anne realizes, like, holy shit, this is... Like, I have unwittingly created a monster. Yeah, this is the catalyst. Um, Guy is with Nans in, uh, in a, a different room. And Guy yeah. is, like calling him hisham he's like you look just like hisham you're hisham right 
yeah because they keep saying don't they people keep thinking oh my god he looks so much like the guy who plays him in the film and it's like uncanny the, how much he looks like him and so yeah in his warped mind he would think that it's it's him and then we get this mob justice scene where Anne rushes in like to uh you know save the day but Guy sees her and like takes a dude hostage runs into another screening room and then all of these guys who are there you know watching this movie realize like oh this is the guy who's been killing all of these people yeah and so they just as as a group attack this guy and attack Guy and murder him yeah <laughs> because be, basically because he threatened their community you know like yeah he made them feel unsafe and so you know as they're killing him we get this sort of flashback that is the you know the the story of young Guy and hisham um and there's like this weird you know kind of surreal moment where this crow revives Guy after the fire and maybe maybe that happened maybe it didn't but it, it explains well you know if Guy probably believes that's how it went down yeah yeah and so that's why he was leaving all these crow feathers with the bodies mm -hmm. and but apparently he had amnesia went to paris and then when he saw this movie yeah, uh, so started coming back to him celine dion style yeah <laughs> it's all coming back to him now and he went crazy and started killing all these <laughs> yeah. people and so yeah. and, and so he is killed by the community that he terrorized yes exactly and it's just such a a, a bit of sweet irony because you know like he he was just this really innocent young kid who was just exploring his sexuality had found love and you know instead of finding the warmth and acceptance and things that you sh should have from your family and if you do because you find this with the gay community is that you you have your chosen family because so often more often than not unfortunately you know gay people queer people trans people they're not accepted by their family they get turned out into the streets they get kicked out of homes or they get abused or you know any of these horrible things and so they find a new home and a new family within the gay community and you know when this happened to Guy obviously you know his situation is very extreme but you know he's been rejected by his biological family but instead of finding a new home where he could have been happy and accepted and found a new family within the gay community he instead turns it into something really ugly and awful and a scary place where a lot where a lot of if not all of these other people would have that's their home that's their chosen family that you're choosing to attack and really you should be part of that family but you're not and the hatred that you've experienced you've turned on to them and you're doing the same thing to them that was done to you when they just needed a home just like you did it's yeah. just infinitely sad to me like i really do feel for Guy's character like he's, he's a brutal character but i really just feel so so much pity for him because everything was taken away when there was no reason for it and it's really sad yeah and the the movie does though end on a happy note yeah find it yeah and where you know Anne has moved on is doing a new movie mm -hmm. that apparently is all about rome maybe sure and um anyway it's just i mean it's a one big fuck fest <laughs> yeah and the kind of conclusion for Anne's character is that she has this vision of Lois and uh, you know they, they kind of weirdly reconcile yeah 
and yeah you know it, it's sort of or at least she is coming to peace with her relationship you know metaphorically i suppose coming to, to terms with the relationship that she had with lois and is able to let her go and move yeah. on um i mean i mean the way that dreams and flashbacks and you know unreliable narration like narrative and everything like um is used in this film and again like you know like a lot of jello like um it's not like far-fetched for it to be just this kind of like metaphysical representation of her hopes and her her mentality as she's kind of yeah as you say like come to sort of accept and like forgive herself i think a little bit and and grow as a person and and have that personal growth and yeah and come to terms with what's happened with her and lois yeah it's you know it's really beautiful it really is and at the end of the day just to, to put a button on my thoughts about this movie i think one of mm -hmm. the the interesting things about this movie and one of the things that i really like about it and i wish that we saw more of in movies is that um the movie itself is so unapologetically gay like it it, it features yeah. gay characters and and that is certainly a theme that runs through the movie but it's not like you were saying it's not a movie about like oh uh, uh, you know as much as i love blue is the warmest color that is very much a movie about like a, a young woman wrestling with her sexuality yeah. whereas this is just yeah. like no nope, they, they, they all that wrestling is done these are just gay characters yeah yeah and i think it is good to have that representation because i um you know when i when uh call me by your name came out um, and I watched that film and, you know, that's also a, an unapologetically gay film. Mm. Um, and I, I remember finishing it and I remember talking about it with my friend and she was like, you know, it's so nice. I really love how his dad is so accepting of his son's sexuality. And he's like, we know, you know, and all of this kind of thing. And it was very, it was a very wholesome response. And I said, this was like, you know, when it came out, so this was a good few years ago. And I said, but that's like, I, I love to see that, but that's not really like a common experience for a lot of gay people. So until like, we're at a place where that is more common, like, I don't know, like it just didn't really ring overly true for me, especially considering the time in which it, the film was set. And then my friend said, basically this is like, yeah, but aren't you so sick of just seeing gay like people coming out as gay and it being met with you know hostility or you know hurt or anguish or any of those things and i was just like yeah actually yeah you're right like we see so much of that why can't you know we have a a scenario in film and a film like that which was obviously you know won oscars and it was very well received and everything why can't we have like a positive spin on the coming out experience or you know, like, I think, you know, for me, like, um, when I realized that, I mean, I didn't know that pansexuality was a thing. Like I just identified as bisexual for a little while. Um, but I remember telling my mum, and my mum is weird because my mum is a very open, progressive person. Like she is not prejudiced against anyone unless you're an asshole, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, basically. Um, but I was, so I was, I don't know, maybe 14 or 15 or something like this. And it was like around the early 2000s and where, you know, it was really common for sexuality to be exploited for, I don't know, whatever kind of gains. And I said, I told her I was bisexual and she was like, oh, love, no, it's, it's just a phase. And... I know that she didn't mean anything by it because to her, she probably thought it was a phase because, you know, sometimes it is just a phase. And at the time, like a lot of girls were sort of like experimenting with that side of thing or just doing it to, you know, get guys off. But yeah. And, um, but I remember just being so conscious of trying not to be that type of girl where it was kind of like just doing it cause it's cool. Mm -hmm that i really repressed my sexuality for a long while because i thought oh i'm i must it must be a phase um 
you know, if my mum, who's so open and progressive and whatever, is telling me that it's probably just a phase, then, well, shit, it probably is. And I kind of wish that I'd had more, I mean, I guess, you know, early 2000s, there wasn't a lot of this stuff about um, in the media, or at least not media that I was exposed to, because um, this was before I really got, like, a handle on the internet and stuff as well. Um, and streaming was like streaming TV shows and stuff was certainly not a thing. So um, back in my day, <laughs> um, so I didn't really have like a lot of like exposition to different types of, you know, gay stories and things. And so I kind of only had my very sort of limited in the country in a very kind of like, you know, privileged, everything's very, you know, cis and, pretty everyone's one color type thing um i didn't really have much exposure to anything so um it i really kind of wish that i'd had more exposure to different people's stories about their sexuality and things because i might have questioned it further and gone actually more maybe i maybe it isn't a phase and maybe all right or even if it is a phase still maybe try and explore that a little bit to really work it out and don't just sort of shut things down um, because, you know, as a result, I've primarily been with men and it's really only been since becoming like an adult, 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 like, have I sort of like realized, well, these, these attractions and these feelings and these urges aren't going away, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <clears throat> like maybe, maybe, maybe I am gay. Um, and I think like, yeah, as you're saying, like, if we can have, I mean, maybe, I mean, a film like this isn't exactly the most accessible thing, but like just having more representation where, you know, being gay is something that is you're comfortable with. Like, for example, Shit's Creek. Have right. you seen Shit's Creek? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, terrific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh my God, if anyone listening to this hasn't watched Shit's Creek, go do yourself a favor and fucking binge watch it all because it's the best thing you'll ever have in your life. Um, but it was, again, it was like, you know, this, you've got this pansexual um, character who's very kind of like, I don't want to say campy and like a out and John kind of campy, but he's, you know, he's, <laughs> I, mean, I can't even describe David Rose, but Jesus, just watch the show. He, he has um, a great explanation. When, oh, his explanation is amazing. Of, of just like, here, here is my, sort of the, the range of my attraction. And puts it yeah. very plainly and very simply. And the uh, the character that he's explaining it to is like, okay, I understand that. And then they move on. It, it's yeah, do, wonderful. Do you know what's really funny as well is that the character who plays Stevie, who's the other person in the scene, um, she is pansexual in real life. And she's only just realized this herself. And she was having a, a conversation with, with Dan Levy. Uh, is it Levy or Levi? Levi? I, think Levi. It's, I think it's Le Levy. Levy, okay, um, yeah, uh, who plays David Rose, and um, she was just like, yeah, I just don't, like, I kind of, and he was, like, looking, it's like, we discussed this in the show, not only is this in the show, but it's, you were in the fucking scene, <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like, oh, yeah, yeah. and it was, she put it up on her Instagram, I follow her on Instagram, and it was just, like, the purest, like, oh huh, emily like yeah <laughs> um but yeah if anyone has any slightest interest of finding it out i think it's like episode four or something in season one but just go watch the fucking show anyway my point of bringing um shit's creek up was because they they moved to this like kind of backwards town a bit kind of you know off the beaten track kind of town one of the very small town middle america type places and it could have so easily been a show where they reject david or anyone because of the fact that he's you know gay um and i say gay i mean in terms of the broad umbrella i don't mean just ma you know, male on male sure um you know and and it's literally it's not even a thing it's not even a thing no one bats a fucking island no one's racist no one's homophobic no one's transphobic no one's like anything you know they're all just but it you would expect it from the stereotypical kind of representation that you get of towns like that in the media you would kind of expect it and when it doesn't happen it's like huh well isn't that nice you know yeah i i have often recommended schitt's creek as like if you just want a show that is ultimately about 
a group of people learning how to better care about one another and make the world a better place yeah without it being like saccharine yeah you know it's really funny and it and it's very honest i mean it's very silly at times but it feels very real and yeah. it's yeah Shit's creek is up there with like um um uh what is the jason sudeikis uh oh, ted know. lasso oh, it's up right, there with right, ted right, lasso right. as far as like yeah this is just a show that will make you feel better about being a person yeah a hundred percent and it's got that really great dry canadian sense of humor mm-hmm. which i just adore yeah just adore adore silly but yeah so it's just yeah so sort of back to to my first heart like it's um it's it is it's really great to have oh what was that some banging around upstairs sorry um yeah it's really great to have the kind of representation here not only is it a broad representation but it's also a very comfortable representation like they're very comfortable with who they are and happy with who they are i'm proud of who they are and damn right they should be yeah and it's good it's good to see yeah i i wish there were more movies like this where uh, like being gay was a fact and not the point of contention yeah Um, yeah and yeah it's uh, and and and, and besides that a terrific like homage to giallo films oh my god yeah if you are remotely a giallo fan go and check this fucking film out like it's uh it's got everything it's got everything in there and and it's funny Mm-hmm. And it laughs at itself a bit at times, and and it has yeah. I mean, like it's not you know it's not being gay isn't a point of contention. It definitely does though touch on like you know as you said like the external issues that the LGBTQ community has to face and has faced and continues to face. And um, but it's but it's a very positive look. I would think you know like there ain't no sl- slut shaming in this film. No, 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 no. Like, yeah, th- this is uh, about a lot of people who uh, have no problem with the way that they're living their lives. And it's it's a, it's a, you can tell that it's a good environment on set as well. You know, no one's being forced to be there. No one's doing anything they're not happy with. Everyone's smiling and laughing. The, the only gripe is that they don't get paid enough. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> that's literally it. So it's, it's, it's good to see. And, um, yeah, it's a really great Jello. It's a really great murder mystery. It's really disturbing at times. It's got a cool backstory. I say cool, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's interesting, and it looks amazing. The soundtrack is phenomenal. And you got some good deep dick in. I mean, really, what's not lots of, not what's not to love? What is not to love? Uh, everyone loves a bit of deep dicking. I mean, well, not everyone. On one side or another, you know. Like <laughs> I guess maybe lesbians. Lesbians don't really enjoy yeah. a good deep dicking. I don't know. You can do a bit of pegging. Yeah, but you know it, that it, bit of strap on the, action. Right. That's that's using attachments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's not not stick, dicking deep dicking in the literal term, I suppose. Right. Not in the uh, biological sense. Yeah. 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 But um, but at the end of the day, you know, it is. It, it's a wonderful movie both in what it is saying about its characters and Mm. and it's also just uh, you know a solid horror flick and uh you know if if you can't get past there's gonna be dudes blowing each other in this movie (laughs) this is not the one for you right like that's if that is a problem you're not going to enjoy this movie but uh if you can I don't know. Just be cool with human beings do doing what human beings do. Um, I mean, yeah, and and don't kid yourself. This was happening long, long, long before the seventies. Like, read any Roman or Greek literature, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, it, it, it was compulsory at a certain point in history that you had to do some fucking with with other guys. Um, it should be fucking. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, the old Duncan and Bo uh motto uh you should be fucking and the the romans were like not only should you be fucking you have to be fucking you have to be fucking (laughs) yeah like basically we've softened it over the years um oh yeah everyone's all like oh my god up in arms and shit it's like you kidding what there's nothing new under the sun that hasn't been done a million times over a million years ago like (laughs) literally it's uh i don't know actually 
Maybe were we humans around a million nah, years ago? Nah, it it, it, it's more like was it three hundred thousand years ago, something like that? Something like that. Okay, well, you know, then all time it's been happening for all time. Let's not get our knickers in a twist over it now, for fuck's sake. Um, hold on. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, no, no, no. You're right. Um, first human ancestors appeared between five million and seven million years ago. Oh, they sure. Uh, and we're we're using crude stone tools by two and a half million years ago. Holy shit. And uh but we were both kind of right because the modern what we think of as the modern human was about three hundred thousand years ago. Okay. I feel so small. We yeah, right. I hate knowing th- things like that because I just my my head can't take it. Can't <laughs> take my my brain don't like it. It don't like the knowledge. Speaking of giving head. <laughs> um <laughs> anything else that you wanna you wanna say about this one before we wrap this up? <laughs> about the film giving head either or either or or. focus on the balls a little bit of attention little yeah you don't have to focus on them but yeah just just check it yeah Yeah. check it every now and again see how they're doing yeah give them give them a handshake (laughs) um (laughs) little tap on the head going how you doing yeah how you doing there buddy yeah as uh as as uh austin powers put it give the old twig and berries a bit of the house your father Couldn't have said it better myself, though. <laughs> um, um, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like, yeah, the, the film's a cracking one. Go check it out, and um, you know, love is love, and don't get your knickers in the twist. I, I agree with all of that 100. Uh, percent Where uh, can people find more of you, Kate, and and explain um, what Edenism is because it sounds like a cult. <laughs> Uh, it's my OnlyFans page. Right? No, I'm joking. No, absolutely not. Got an OnlyFans. Although with this economy, I'm tempted. Um, Edenism. Edenisms is an acronym. It stands for Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds, and that is uh, my very long-winded title of my other podcast, um, where you can find us on all your usual places, anywhere you're listening to this one, I imagine. Um, and we have a Facebook page, and we have an Instagram page. Um, so go check us out it's a um uh, it's not primary it's, it's primarily horror but it's not just horror we deal with lots of different genre movies anything a little bit weird or a bit out there and or you know a bit creepy or dark and um and we have a few funny segments and it's basically just me and my lovely friend and co-host matt chatting films and taking the piss out of each other basically yes. yeah. oh and we also recently um we it's not dropped yet but I mean, no, this episode will probably drop soon because I'm really behind on my shit. My mum's been visiting, so I'm a bit behind on stuff. Um, but we just had Heather Powell and uh, Scott Scotty Crawford from the Friday Nightmares podcast um, just guest on our most recent episode. So if you're a fan of them, check them out on our show and then listen to all the rest of the episodes and give us numbers, please. Excellent. Um, and obviously, uh, if you were listening to this, please, uh, rate and review where possible, uh, the dark mm-hmm. parade and, uh, you know, uh, we are on the, the precipice of a new month of episodes all about, uh, horror on the waves and under the waves. So, um, that will all be happening in May and, Ooh. and more importantly, or equally importantly, um, next month we'll be back with a, a brand new heart of horror talking about you know more great sex advice (laughs) and another movie that has something to do with love or romance or dating or doing it something or paying attention to the balls something (laughs) widening the throat you know it's all it's all good stuff yep all right uh all right well that's it everybody (laughs) we'll see you next month (laughs) <laughs> oh my god.